Okay, so what we need to do for the RCS pods is to add a cube. And we are going to, this is easy, the cube is thankfully, the RCS pods, I mean, are thankfully a very easy part to do. And we're going to go transparent. We're going to make sure that it's sized properly. And then we'll basically be using symmetry to add it to other locations. So it's sort of like that. Okay. And then from the top view, we can scale it in this direction. Oops. SY. You'll note that it's sort of separated from the pod in a few points. And so let's make sure it's conforming to the pod. And what we're going to do is we are going to go into edit mode, click loop cut. We got make cuts sort of matching where the pod stuff is. Vertex selection. And we need to make sure that we are in the sort of transparent mode, but we need to make sure we get both vertices here. There's one on top and one on bottom. And so we use circle select or box select for that. And then just sort of make it match the pod. So I use circle select myself. And we could probably match that vertex vertex, but I don't, we don't need to need to just make sure it's close enough okay so then we could use beveling to get the sort of slope but I think we'll go for uh, sub uh, subdivision surface but first I want to make sure that the forward ones here are down so we get this slope here. The reason I'm not using beveling here is because I think the beveling would have to occur on many different edges and they'll probably end up conflicting. So I would rather just use the subsurface modifier in this case. So subdivision surface. Well, you can see it sort of scrunched the whole thing up into this weird lump. And that is because it is basically averaging everything out. And it's adding a lot of uh, vert vertices to it. That's why you don't normally for game parts use subdivision surface very often. But, and we're going to add a lot more vert vertices, but it'll make it look good. So, and it's probably worthwhile here. We haven't used a whole lot of beveling or subdivision surface otherwise. Uh, we could probably bevel this edge and the bottom edge here, but we'll wait on that. Making these RCS pods look good will probably be a good idea though. Okay, so to fix this lump, we are going to add some loop cuts to sort of support the shape. And uh, before we do that, let's shade smooth so that we see what it's actually looking like. And of course, we are going to go back to normals and do auto smooth. Let's up that by a bit more. We do want sort of a smooth thing going. Okay, and then we can continue sort of getting this. Uh, sometimes it'll have to be doubled up if we really want it close to the edge there. And here we'll have it go like that. But it'll be sort of smoothish. And it'll make for a nice little pod thing there. Like so. I think that's good enough for now. And if you don't mind extra polygons, then we could even make it tighter like this. That looks better. But it's a lot. If you take a look down here at the faces, you're going from 24,000 faces to 28,000. Oh, that's already on two, sorry. Uh, 23,329 to 24,000. Basically, a thousand extra faces on one of these when we do that. And then we multiply that by four. So that'll be 4,000 extra faces when the entire scene only has 23,000. So uh, uh, yeah, the subdivision surface can really increase your, your count quite a lot. But we are going to need a lot of faces in here anyway because we're going to put the thrusters in and they're going to, we're going to use the same sort of situation with the booleans. And so we would like them 
and up, I've got to apply the scale right now. Uh, and so we're going to have some interesting stuff happening with the geometry. I might put another thing there. I don't know. Uh, right here is some weird... It's sort of edgy here. I think that's a little bit better. Okay. So we'll leave it like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply this. Because we're going to do some cutting. And I'm going to call this RCS pod and no space. Okay, now these cylinders are our RCS thrusters and we're gonna flip them around so that they're on the bottom. There's gonna be these bottom ones and then roll thrusters as well. Okay, so those are pitch and yaw thrusters. Uh, Shift D and I'm going to gonna want to r rotate them to zero there. And you can see on the side view there where, actually, you see on that one where the roll thruster is, but for some reason it's missing on the diagram here. So, let's move up, oh, wrong thing. Move that up to that dot there, and that's good enough. And there does seem to be a dot here. And it looks like that is an RCS thruster. So, okay, we'll duplicate this one more time. And this one, we do not need symmetrized in Y. We need to rotate it in the Z axis. And we are going to lift it up here and make sure that's relatively in line with that dot there. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be that one, but, uh, okay, a little bit more. Okay. So, that'll be the RCS pods, and actually, we don't need to worry about mirroring them over there. We're going to copy this RCS pod over. But, it doesn't matter. This is obviously off-center. We'll put it zero in Y. Okay. And we are going to Boolean everything. A little bit better. Okay, so add modifier to the RCS pod boolean and just the cylinders. And if we remove the cylinders, we see the holes produced. This time we don't have to worry about filling the holes with anything. Uh, we may have to texture the interior make it look a little bit different because it's white on the outside but it's going to be black on the inside or some sort of metallic. So keep that in mind that we might want to paint them differently instead of having a white texture on the interior. But okay, we've got those. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply them. And it looks fine to me. I Since we're going to be duplicating it, I think that I'm going to fix uh, figure out the textures on it first. So... In order to do this, Kerbal Space Program only allows one material on each mesh. So we're going to actually separate out the meshes for the interior of the nozzles for the RCS thrusters. So we're going to have one material for the whole RCS pod and another for the RCS thrusters. And I'm going to do that now and start separating things out because we are going to want to duplicate this and save texture space by having the same texture, the por same portion of the texture map for all four of the RCS pods. I don't think there are any special markings on them. They all seem just flat white, so I think we can get away with that. Otherwise, we'll be taking up more texture space, having each one have its own uh, area of the texture map. So we'll do some texturing now. So let's get rid of the normals, though it's very important to make sure that you do have them pointing the right direction. Now, notice that some like this one, it's a little bit weird, but its normal is pointing out from here instead of the center, and that's because of the cut that we've made into it. it it's weird how they measure where the normal should be pointing out of, but yeah, because of that cut, its normal is here. 
and so sometimes like these are here but they are pointed in the right direction but let's get rid of the normals now so that we don't have to be distracted by them what we're interested in is the faces inside here so i'm selecting that selecting those selecting those using circle select here now you see why circle select is handy for pods huh as opposed to box select okay so we've got those thrusters now those are not the only thrusters that we will be needing but let's separate by selection and let's just call these rcs pod thrusters get into object mode create a new material i'm just gonna call it rcs i'm gonna create a new material for the pod and i'm just gonna call this white just to tell myself what it actually is now we have rcs thrusters up here too so before we map things out, and this edge isn't quite meeting up with what we need. So I, I just noticed that right now, but I might as well take care of it. Uh, we want this edge to actually meet up with that edge properly. There's a whole issue of the umbilical, but that's separate. Okay, so we've got that. And then these thrusters, that's a little bit of a messy thing there, but... Let's go here, select those, and I want the faces, not the edges. Make sure to get all of them. Some of them might slip through. And in order to, oops, in order to select them properly, circle select and aim right at the dot. And we'll have to do that on the other side as well. The RCS thruster map is going to be really, really small anyway. But there are so many of them. Like, we'll probably only have it be a 512 by 512 map. Uh, that's worth pointing out. A lot. Uh, one strategy for doing the texture maps is having everything on a single texture map. But because Kerbal Space Program, I think, is limited to 2K textures at a time, um, or at least I haven't been very successful in using higher than that, uh, except for the world maps. Those are higher res. But I figure that it's better to just have a whole bunch of different separate texture maps and different materials rather than try and cram everything onto the same one. So, But cramming everything into the same one is definitely a way to go. So, but keep in mind that no matter what, you are going to have to make sure there's only one material per mesh. And a mesh is one of the things here in this list, the little triangle things. Pod RCS. Okay. And so we've got all those RCS things separated. And then in UV editing, what we can do is uh, go out of edit mode initially. Uh, we are selecting those RCS things and we're going to select linked material that'll select everything that has the same material tab a a will select all the things in edit mode and then press u and i'll keep it simple we'll just do a uv uh, smart uv project here and that'll be quick since this is a very small thing so we get all these edges those are the rcs ports and they're all laid out okay so now that we have done that make sure that the rcs pause thrusters are a child of the RCS pod, so they go along with it. So not those thrusters though. Let's get out of edit mode. We don't want those thrusters. We just want these RCS pod thrusters to be a child of the RCS pod. So we do control P out here. If you do control P here, I don't think it works. Control P out here and set parent to object. Okay, now the RCS pod thrusters are a child of the RCS pod, and they go along with it. Same thing for the, R the pod RCS and the pod, control P, uh, so that if we move the pod, the little RCS things go along with it, otherwise we'll just have a hole there. Okay, so we've got the RCS pod. Let us mirror. They've got these little other things on them, but I have no idea what those are. Um, they are holes. I think they were also RCS thrusters, annoyingly enough, but nothing is pointing at them. <laughs> I think they might be RCS thrusters, but they were not 
indicated. Okay, we've got more RCS thrusters. That's so annoying. Um, I'm gonna go back before we duplicated things. Make sure you have a lot of undo levels. <laughs> Best advice ever. Okay, so now it is before we haven't mirrored anything. See, we haven't mirrored everything. And we need those cylinders again. We don't need these anymore. And we don't need this anymore. Hopefully I'm right that the things, the holes at the top are RCS thrust vectors, holes, and we gotta flip these around. It sure has a lot of RCS thrusters, doesn't it? These are convenient though, I like them. Uh, they'll fit. Okay, well, we are going to add another boolean to the RCS pod. And this RCS pod we'll get rid of too. Oh, those are the thrusters. Yeah, delete those. Okay, those were duplicates. Alright, boolean. Cylinder. Make sure it's not looking weird. And they're actually closer together. Hold on. The shape of this is a little bit different looking at uh, other pictures. I'm going to redo this. I think they, they have a sort of slopey down thing going. And what I mean is I just want these top edges here and we want to sort of have them slope down and also this one slope down a little bit more you know, it's a little bit better I think that's closer to what they have and I'll pack these in a little bit closer together alright that's a little bit more like it I think Mm, I see a stray bit there. Hold on. Okay, well, anyway, it's sufficiently hidden. Okay, I think now we can apply this mirror. Uh, sorry, apply the Boolean. Hide the cylinders. We've got those, but now this these also have to be part of the RCS thing. So we select them, we press P, separate. Now they're that bit. In object mode we take that, we press Control, we click the RCS pod thrusters, we do Control J, and I'll join them to that. And then back in UV editing, we click any of the RCS things in object mode. We select linked material tab A to select everything and then U and smart UV project and there they are. Okay, so we'll do it that way and now I'll do the mirroring again. So it's already mirrored that and then the RCS pod thrusters is already mirrored so that's okay. And then once again we select these. Okay, so we're going to Shift D to duplicate. And now we've got the RCS pod and the RCS pod thruster. We just need to move the RCS pod because the thruster will go along with it because it's a child of the RCS pod. So we're gonna copy the X, paste it into the Y, press zero for the X, mirror along the Y axis instead of the X axis, and then rotate in the Z axis 90 degrees. And then it's all ready to go. Uh, except the uh, RCS pod thrusters are not showing up. <laughs> Where are they? Okay, they're over there. Oh, they need to change their axis of symmetry, that's why. Okay. So that is all right. We could just apply scale, uh, sorry, apply location and then rotate, but this is fine too. Okay, so we've got those. Now we have to figure out what else we need to do. Uh, there is the matter of the solar panels and then the little engines. Uh, I've reconsidered the bottom of this. Some other views seem to have this lower, so I'm going to have it lower. And then we're going to have solar panels at the bottom. 
the problem with the solar panels is they're um, actually they're like that and difficult I don't know which direction they're oriented in um, if this is matching that then uh, it's sort of in the direction of that window and the hatch so uh, probably this way around we'll p create a center line just so that I have a visual of that so join and one two three four five six seven let's say seven one two three four five six seven let's click there join one two three four five six seven here one two three four five six seven okay click that one and join and then this will be our solar panel area and then so the escape engines are going to go over here probably one there and one there and guess what we're gonna have other booleans now if we're gonna have booleans we're gonna need to cut this a little bit better because these are not quads and we're already probably going to end up with n-gons so I'm just gonna just completely join everything across here and then some down as well so we're going to crisscross this okay so what we have here is we've done basically the cutting that I wanted to do in this quadrant here Ooh. we can do a little bit um I sort of wanted to be very clear that this is a separate yeah this will be fine for now so we would like to mirror x positive this side this is x positive and this is y negative so i'm going to select everything oops select all, all that mesh symmetrize and what we want is x positive to x negative so now it's copied this bit over to there that's fine and then we can mesh symmetrize now we want y negative to y positive this one and now it's got it over there and just take a quick look to make sure nothing else looks weird because if you symmetrize things and things weren't originally symmetrical you could have accidentally symmetrized something that you didn't mean to so we can see where this thought that the engines would go we'll just put them in basically the same location and we're going to go into object mode add mesh cylinder and we would really like to not have such a big cylinder maybe 0.3 and we're going to use this to cut a hole for the engines uh, select both these things tab all right now this we are going to move more to where we want this thing probably not that far so maybe I went too far with the solar panels I don't know I think that the solar panels are pretty darn big maybe this engine gap can be smaller they cover the vast majority of the area so we're gonna move these a little bit closer to the edge here it's basically the same location I get I think roughly I think the nozzles here are a little bit overstated uh, we are going to mirror in X and Y um, I don't really care about clipping and we are going to mirror across the service module I'm gonna create another connection from here to here join because we're obviously going a little bit further okay so we've got it like that and we want to see how deep we want these let's move these up I think it's fair to say that the engines got to occupy about this kind of space right here at the least we got to apply scale just for the heck of it so they're gonna be like that those are, are our engine gaps 
and on the service module we're going to add a modifier boolean and we're going to add that cylinder we're going to hide the cylinder, okay, opaque hide the cylinder see that the gaps don't look horrible and I'm okay with those and then we'll, we'll sculpt the engines a little bit and we'll put them there uh, for the solar panels and do they really go all the way to the edge? It looks like it on this image, they really go to the edge. So we're going to select all of these. And I'm going to extrude... Um, I don't want to extrude them. Let's just, just make sure I didn't extrude it. I'm going to separate it as a new part. And this will be our solar panel part. So that will be textured separately. And but we're still gonna make it a child of the service module. Control P for that. So that'll go along with the service module. And you know while we're at it, these RCS pods should go along with the service module too. So they are now children of the service module part. Uh, that is not the only thing that's a different texture. The the solar panels. I mean, we also have radiators, and I'm gonna just do the radiators as a separate texture and so the radiators go around here and around here and around here and around there okay so I'm gonna P separate the selection call that radiators and we're going to parent, uh, make the service module the parent of them. We don't have the right scale. Right now we haven't made any animations, so I don't have any problems selecting everything and just going control A and applying scale. If you have animations, that would be a very bad thing to do. <laughs> so uh, if you have animations and you suddenly apply scale, those animations are not gonna work very well anymore. So keep that in mind. But I just found out there are two more RCS thrusters. Isn't that wonderful? There are two RCS thrusters. I want my cylinders. Okay, there they are. They're at the top. Oh, sorry, they're on this side here. There, there are some at the top, I think. Well, there are two holes at the top. I don't think they really are RCS thrusters, but I know, I know there are RCS thrusters on this side. Okay, so sort of like that. Uh, that's what they look like to me. Okay, so pod. I'm going to apply that. Okay, we have been doing other texture things. Let us continue that idea. We're going to have a new window texture. This will be really small. The seat and seat steel came with the seat that I imported. I usually use the material one for the colliders just to get them out of the way. That way when we import it into something like Substance Painter, uh, we can just click on the material material and hide them. Okay, so those are the windows. And then there were around the windows sort of a black tile area and also a black tile area down below. But there's also sort of a steel part down here. And then there's the heat shield. Oh, there's also sort of a fringe on it. Forgot about that. There's a weird fringe on, on the service module. It goes like... And E for extrude, and it's sort of like that, and tilted down a bit. And it does sort of cut into the RCS pods. I don't know what the heck it's for, but it's there, so 
So we'll we'll add it. Uh, see, it's sort of like it's right there. I don't know what to make of it, but we have it. We now we have it. Anyway, all of this stuff is white. So I'm just gonna add the white texture to it, and that's already white. And these cutters we don't need anymore. I believe we've done the boolean already? No, we haven't. Okay, we'll apply this boolean and we can get rid of this cylinder. The capsule itself is sort of a light blue, so we won't call it white. And actually this fringe thing is more of a black thing with holes in. I don't know if I want to go into that detail. I don't even understand that detail. I, I have textures that are sort of holy textures. Uh, we, we might do it when we get to that part. We could add it to that, but I'll think about that later. Yeah, it's sort of a bluish. So I'm going to have a pod blue for this. But we are going to separate out the areas that are black. And I'm just going to make the this the very bottom here, there's a little bit of space between. Uh, I think it's more like this. Okay, well, great, I'll have to select those again. Uh, but this bit is black. And then... Sort of like that. And then the area around these. And then the area around the windows. That one's a little bit lopsided. Okay, but also these thrusters that we have that we didn't add to the other RCS thrusters. I'm just going to add it to this texture that we're going to have here now. And we are going to sep separate all of this stuff into its own mesh. Okay, so all of that stuff. That all becomes its own mesh, so obviously we really, really want to make sure that's attached to the pod. And the pod interior should also be attached to the pod, Control p so it goes along with it. And these, I'll just say pod tiles. And we're, I'm just going to call it HRSI, the type of tile that we're talking about. The pod I'm going to create as pod blue. And for the interior, we're just going to create all these materials. It's got to be a little bit of a hassle, but it'll be higher quality this way than having it all in one texture and one material. Okay, so we've got that. This cap is also blue. So we're going to just add that to the pod blue material. And probably the there, there are certain parts of this that are not blue. This bit here is sort of a metal and probably the entire bottom. So let's focus on this. Oh, we've accidentally grabbed some faces here. Okay, so let's hide some things so that we see what's got those. Let me hide that and hide the heat shield. Okay. okay, not edit mode. This pod tiles, I accidentally selected these two bits. And we want to separate by selection. Get rid of the material. Otherwise we'll have two materials in the pod and remerge that with the pod. Pod still has this little thing, I don't want that. Okay, now when we focus on the pod, it's got all that stuff. And this bottom bit, I just want a metal texture, and we'll probably want the same metal texture for the top bit there too. Now there's a ring there that seems to be something else. <laughs> um, okay, let's remove the cap. Oh, I had done something and I forgot to undo it. I was going to do the arrow cap 
and I decided against it, but looks like we're gonna do the arrow cap. Okay, just for the sake of cleaning things up here, we'll have to do the arrow cap. So, uh, going into transparency mode, selecting all this, gonna separate that by selection and call that the arrow cap. And we're going to go solid. And we are going to solidify that. Just about where it's going to clip into the other thing. See, if I make it any bigger, it starts to clip across that. I just want it short of that. So maybe 05. Let's try that for now. Let's hide the arrow cap. Now we've got the interior. Let's verify that this is the interior. Edit mode. Check by the normals. Well, there's some normals that are poking out, but those are the ones that are on these faces here. This is all the interior, but there's not going to be an interior here. Uh, since we're going to do the arrow cap, the ceiling is actually here. But it's going to have a hole that meets up with that. So we're going to have to manage that. But let's just F to fill. And it's pointing down, so that's towards the interior. So that's fine. And we are going to go to top view. And we're going to inset that so that it sort of matches our docking port area. You can see there is a thing there and they're going to be able to go through it, you see. So we're going to extend up in Z, making sure that stays in Z. And that's the internal one. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit complicated. Um, but for now, that's fine. I just need to get rid of these superfluous things, which aren't necessary anymore. Delete those faces. And these faces are, are they necessary? Uh, no, those are not necessary because the arrow cap has those. Let me hide the arrow cap again. These aren't necessary either. Uh, this I, I'll get rid of for now. All right, here we can join stuff up. I'll just bridge edge loops. Oh, uh, no. Okay. We didn't need to do it that way, but... That's fine. And now this is the pod pod. Oh, there's some... The way I did the bridge edge loop seems to have created some issues inside of it a little bit. Let's see. No, that wasn't the bridge edge loop that did that. It's just like that. Oh, shade smooth works, so that's fine. Okay, let me just go back and go ahead and bridge the edge loops again. And GG. Oh, not GG. Just G. Okay, just move like that. Okay. So that's the interior portion of the docking port. And it looks like that from inside. And then we're going to go to the pod and take care of the exterior portion of it. And the exterior portion, we really don't need these here. Here, on this edge here, we're going to extrude straight down. And the top of the pod currently doesn't have any faces. So we're going to... We can't really bridge edge loop because this portion is black, is uh, part of a different part. So we're going to extrude and size out and try and meet these. It's almost there. When the arrow cap is off is actually a short amount of time. Uh, I'll try and refine this a little bit more, but it might just be good enough. 
it's too bad I separated it off a little bit too soon that stuff there I think that's close enough. Okay, so now we've got a proper underside to the aero cap. Got the air cap. I know that was a little bit complicated, so apologies for that. But that'll be how it is <laughs> sometimes. I would like the aero cap to actually meet up with it a little bit better. So we're going to expand out the two rings here. Uh, this ring. Underneath the arrow cap is a little bit complicated and we could greeble it up a little bit to make that complication evident. Okay, so that, that meets the arrow cap a little bit and then we can create an edge to this that meets it the rest of the way by extrusion. like that. So the top of it's like that and when the arrow cap goes it's like this. And normally there's sort of struts here on practically every pod. And then the parachutes are sort of tucked in. I'm not going to do those details right now. What I am going to do is let's deal with the colliders. So the aero cap has the solidify modifier and it's got pod blue. Um, the cap is also already pod blue. Let me just go through and make sure that we don't need the RCS thruster cylinders anymore. The hatch is it's sort of a mixture of tiles and pod blue. I'm just going to straight up make the hatch pod blue. It's a little bit uh, not it's not quite the same size as the hatch. The hatch is a little bit shorter and it's not quite the same. I'm going to right now actually uh, change the center location for the hatch. Uh, just for the heck of it I'm gonna... I think it would swing out like this. So I'm not sure. But I'm gonna set the origin to the 3D cursor right there. And so if we ever wanted to uh, with the hatch we could animate it. Um, not quite in that axis, but anyway, that'll be a better location to animate it from. And hatch will just make pod blue as well. Now the heat shield, now there's a steel portion at the bottom here of the pod. I was gonna do that, but I completely forgot about it because I noticed certain other problems. But transparent, select all these. I'm gonna say P, and we're gonna bring everything back. And this is just gonna be pod bottom. Oh, uh, I think we accidentally selected a ring up there. You know what? The stuff up there might be steelish as well. Maybe we can have that. Let's see. Maybe it'll be good to have this part be the same sort of texture. Not the interior parts though. We aren't selecting those. So yeah. That will also be a steelish texture. I don't know what color it is. I don't have any images of that part except in artist renderings. So, so this part and this part will join. It's a little bit weird because they're on opposite sides, but. And we are going to change what material they have and I'm just gonna call it steel. It's just some sort of silverish thing. Okay, at the same time the heat shield has two materials. The part that interfaces 
I didn't really want that view. Want that. The part where it interfaces with the pod, and let's just add some detail, a very simple detail here. I'm just going to make edge loops and then select this area, faces, and we're going to extrude inward a little bit just to give it some attitude. And these faces here, all of these faces, let's just Alt, Shift, Select all the faces. And these will also be the steel texture that we have. So I'm going to call this Heat Shield Steel. And I'll make the Heat Shield the parent of it. Okay, and that, that steel. Okay and backslash to get out of that. The heat shield, the rest of the heat shield will just be a heat shield texture. I know we're, we're making a lot of textures and if you're not using Substance Bader, I don't recommend that you do this. There are other videos where I've, I've shown texturing and those would be better without uh, Substance Painter. Just checking the curvature of that. I guess I'll accept it. Okay, so we've got those. I want the rest of the service module visible now. I'm just checking everything has texture maps. I mean, materials. We have to actually map them out. Solar panels, the rest of the service modules white. And the interior is something completely different. Uh, as far as interior panels are concerned, that's a whole other business. And the arrow cap is also pod blue. I think that covers everything. Well, if it doesn't, we'll find out pretty soon. Well, I should probably save it before I forget.